So we're gonna tie a Chernobyl crab. This is a simplified version of Tim Borski's fly. This right here is uh, my favorite hook for tying Chernobyl crab for redfish and for bonefish. This is a Mustad C68 tarpon hook. It is very strong, has a really nice gap and a very sharp point. So we're gonna first start by taking that hook, putting it on the vise, like so. Make sure it's secured on there and we'll start tying. First thing you're gonna do is make a base wrap. Tie a base wrap on here so you can secure the materials. If you uh, don't have enough of a base wrap, your materials will start spinning on the hook and that is something you don't wanna do. You spend 10, 15 minutes tying a fly and at the very end it falls apart. Frustrating. Next thing we're going to start with, um, with the Chernobyl crab, it has two hackles coming out of the back, splayed. So we're going to take some Cree hackle and we're gonna pluck, we're gonna pluck out four nice hackles. So here are my hackles. This is to build the claws that are coming out of the back of this fly. So you, you equal, you equal, you find hackles of equal length and you pair them, you pair them all up and make sure everything lines up perfectly. So you want, you want this to splay out. So once I find that length, I'll strip out some, I'll strip out some of these hairs. I'll measure, I'll measure the distance I want. Seems to be the right distance. Voila. You first start by taking two hackles. You tie them from one side to the other. So what I do is I will create a wrap thread on this hook to create a little bit of a bump on the very back of the hook. This bump will help to splay out these hackles. So first thing you do, tie on the hackles on this top side of the hook. Here's one. So you, splay the, so you splay the hackles on the back of this fly, and here's what you have. You have crab claws spread out. Next thing you want to do is I tie a little, I, I usually tie a little bit of an orange egg sac on there. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an attractor, it, just, it, it, it um, adds a little bit of contrast to the fly, and if you notice, you know, a lot of crustaceans out there when they're getting ready to uh, molt or getting ready to, to lay eggs or something will have a little bit of orange on there. So I'll take this, this is a Puglisi shrimp dub brush. I'll take a little bit of it, a little tuft of it, and I'll roll it up like, roll it up like so. I flip the hook over and I'll tie it on V style like so. Put some wraps on one side, grab the other end, pull it back over, and you put wraps over that end as well. You follow that down until you have your material tied like a V. And what I'll do is I will pull the material up, line it up like so, and snip this. And now you have yourself a little egg sac. So now we have the egg sac. We have we have the we have the hackles. Uh, we have claws splayed out. We're going to add a collar to this. This is um, raccoon actually. This is dyed raccoon. It's a very it's a very short raccoon. Uh, it's very buggy, and for tying shrimp and crab flies, it is amazing. I get this at. Um, Oyster Creek Outfitters, they have plenty of this stuff here. So what you do is you find a little tuft and just snip some out like so. It's got some nice guard hairs on it as you can see so it adds 
a lot of bugginess to this fly. You measure out how long you want. You want this to go about halfway, halfway down the hackles. You want to cover about halfway the hackles. So you measure that out, snip it, and you roll it onto your hook like so. You put it on like so, put a little base wrap, I mean two loose wraps, and cinch down, and just tie that down to your hook like so. Pull all the material down. And you now you make your base wrap toward the front of this hook. To add some weight to this fly, I like using, for this particular one, I'm going to use pseudo, pseudo eyes. This is a small size. You can use lead, you can use brass, you can use bead chain if you want to tie a fly for tailors. Uh, this is a good in-between fly. This is a good in-between weight and uh, it adds just enough weight to, to turn the hook over easily and it'll sink when needed yet still be able to land soft. So I'll go ahead and I will tie the eyes in at this point. Adjust the eyes so you make sure they're tight, and I'll put a few tight wraps at the very end. And just to ensure that these eyes are secured, you're not going anywhere, and they'll be durable on here. So now we have weight, we have hackles to make claws, we have a nice collar. It's starting to look a little buggy. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to take your hackles again here. And now we're going to build the carapace, or the body on this fly. You take two webby hackles. Like so. I have a pair of very webby hackles here. When, and rather than, and, and this is going to be palmered on the hook, but rather than traditionally palmering from the base, to the tip, we are going to do this from the tip to the base so that it adds a reverse taper on, on, this, on this fly. Um, this is something a lot of the, the freshwater trout guys do with their flies, um, it, and it translates over very well to, to what we need it for in a saltwater, saltwater fly tying. So you, you take, so you take the tips of these feathers and you tie them on right behind or in front of that collar you made. Make sure it's secured well. Well secured well, you just cut, cut what's left over, and you pull this aside. You're not gonna use these yet, so you just pull this aside, leave it aside. Uh, typically in the traditional fashion of tying a Chernobyl crab, you use uh, deer hair, and you would spin deer hair all the way forward to the eye of the hook. Um, Purpose of deer hair is to make it more buoyant, is to uh, also to help push water um, and to add body to it. But sometimes you don't have time to be stacking and trimming deer hair. So to make things simple, to make your life simple, Enrico Puglisi, Puglisi flies, they make uh, brushes. And this is the, the short uh, half inch uh, tarantula brush. Um, the color I have here is a rusty brown. Uh, so I'll take the tarantula brush. And I'll tie this in front of the hackle that we just tied in, or right on top of it. And just secure it well. You put a nice base wrap on here so you, it adds a little bit of body. So the next thing you do is very simple. With a rotary vise, you just take this and you spin it. All you're doing is, is palmering this this brush forward all the way to the base of the hook. And there you go, you have body. And once you get to the eye of the hook, just secure it on there. Once it's secured, trim the tag. Add a couple more base wraps to secure everything well. 
One thing I like to do, Enrico Puglisi makes this brush here. I'll take this and I'll just brush out the fly, brush out the, uh, the, the brush. And this will make sure all the fibers that are trapped in between are, are picked out. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is you t take your two hackles that you had tied in earlier and you're going to want to palmer them forward. Now don't use the rotary aspect of the rotary vise to do so, I actually do this by hand so that I can push the, the uh, plumes back as you palmer the hackle on here and I'll show you like so. So you take your hackle and you just, all you're doing is you're, you're palmering this on top of the brush and you work your, you work it through the brush. So you know, rather than just wrap, you, you, you work it through here. Try to work this in between the fibers. Going forward. And you see you're working the fibers back. Once you get up to the eyes, go ahead and you secure this on here. Secure it. Turn it over. Clip your tag end. And now you're going to want to take this, pull it back, pull all your fibers back, and just make a few more base wraps on here, a few more wraps to secure everything. You'll take this wire brush again and just comb through your fly one more time just to release any of the uh, trapped fibers between all these hackles. And we're almost done. It's starting to look very buggy. In fact, it's, it's, it's going to look like it looks in the water. Just make sure, just put a couple more wraps and make sure everything is secured, everything's tied back, and bring your thread forward by the eye. So you'll turn over your hook at this point. And what I like to do is take the hackles here in the back underneath the fly on the bottom and just trim it flat. You just want to trim a, a flat surface on the bottom of this fly. This will help in, in making sure that this fly is going to sink with the hook riding upwards. And once we clean that up, that's, that's how it's going to look. And the, the last thing we're going to add to this fly is a weed guard. Um, most places, some places you fish, you won't need a weed guard. If you're fishing over sand, whatever, you don't need a weed guard. But it's nice to have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. So it's easy to trim off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, some 25 pound mono, very simple V style weed guard. You clip it, you, you uh, pinch it. And then you basically put it down here on the hook and just wrap it over. Wrap over. <coughs> once, you, once you put a nice wrap on it, you, you hold it, pinch it down, and put some wraps behind this weed guard to help perk it upwards. So I like to put about 15 to 20 wraps on here. Make sure you can spread this out. Make sure everything is lined up. And now you just trim your weed, trim your weed guard. All you do is just, at this point, just whip finish it. Put a dab of glue on here, and you're basically done. For those who like to take it a step further and make the fly more durable, you can buy any of uh, the various uh, um, UV curing epoxies on the market and basically put some of this stuff over the wraps of the eyes of this fly and also over the, the, the back underside of it. Sure, everything's good here. Take your UV light, hit it for a few seconds. Okay. 
and it's cured. After this, I'd like to put a little bit of a uh, a little bit of hardest hull or hardest nails on here, and you're and you're good to go. This is this fly right here. The Chernobyl crab will catch bonefish and redfish, and even permit anything that'll eat a crab. You get a Chernobyl crab.